Hi, I'm Gordon Hunt with Civic Republic. We're here with Laurel Lynn CEO Sharon Morrow to talk about what to do here and how they're helping families. Okay, Sharon, do you want to explain to us um, what you guys do here and how long have you been here? We have been here. Well, Laurel Lynn is a part of, or historically was, the Children's Sunshine Home. Uh, and the Children's Sunshine Home has been here since 1925. And it was originally set up as a convalescence home for children uh, from inner city Dublin who had rickets. Um, and so it was set up by a paediatrician, a lady called Dr Ella Webb. Um, and it's evolved over the years and uh, we've cared for children with disabilities and approximately four years ago we opened Laurel Inn House uh, following a fundraising uh, or a joint fundraising campaign. Uh, Jane McKenna uh, was a lady who sadly lost two daughters um, and uh, following the death of her second daughter Lynn uh, embarked on a fundraising campaign for a children's hospice um, and at around that time Children's Sunshine Home were also looking at addressing palliative care needs for children as well so the two came together um, and uh, formed what is now Laurel Inn um, and set up Ireland's first children's hospice. A parental point of view, what's the process? Um, who, do, do parents approach you? If you would like to access the hospice services here, um, you can self-refer. We've had referrals from other carers, we've had referrals from grandparents, um, and then you have healthcare professionals like the family's child's consultant, uh, their GP, uh, other healthcare professionals like community nurses and outreach nurses. So it is an open referral process, so anyone can, uh, can send a referral and access the service. Once we receive that referral, we check down through it and make sure they meet the criteria for a children's hospice. Um, and in general, the criteria would be that a child has to have a life-limiting condition, which means they've been diagnosed as having a condition that would mean they won't reach adulthood. Um, and so then we'll, we'll look at what what aspects of our service that family can benefit most from and that will involve an assessment of the child and the family. The family will come on site and meet the staff here. Uh, we try and cater the service to the individual needs of each family. Every family have different needs. Some families um, will use our Laurel Inn at Home service which is a hospice in the home type service where we might provide four or five hours of hospice care to a family in the home once a week um, and that meets the needs of that family. There are other families who prefer uh, respite out of home and will come and stay in Laurel Inn for a, for a short break, uh, for a longer break if they want to take other children away on a, on a holiday um, and so we can care for either the child or the entire family here um, and then there are other aspects of our service around family support. So we offer breathing support, we offer psychological care and counselling, uh, we offer play therapy, music therapy. So it really is down to what the needs are of each individual family. But most of these children are, are quite sick, they're quite fragile, um, they would have a lot of equipment and a lot of care needs um, and for a family to pack all of that up, to bring it up to Laurel Inn for a number of days for a short break can be quite an undertaking for many, many families um, and we'll use the services of Bumbalance um, and other I suppose other uh, supports and charities that are there as well to help us to do that um, but for families who are further away what we would like to do is expand our Laurel Inn at Home program so that we can provide some hospice care in the home for families who find it difficult to come up here. Can you explain the uh, at home service because again if it's, if it's nationwide that obviously helps with you can attract everyone into the one one area. Yes. How many staff do you have? How many carers do you have going around the country visiting people in their homes? So the, the team at the moment is made up of 11 staff um, and we operate in 11 counties. So we're in Dublin North East and Dublin South at the moment. Um, so we extend up into the border to Loud Drogheda and down just to the, the Wicklow border as well. Um, at the moment there are 60 families that use that service but the demand even within the region that we're in is for approximately there's 150 to 200 families who would like to access that service um, and that's just within the Dublin region so we know that if we were to expand or extend that service out to the rest of the country that there's certainly a demand there too for it um, but it really is down to um, how quickly we can generate funds for that service and how quickly we can recruit staff into the service too. So the disability service um, is funded through the HSE. Um, the hospice service is funded through donations um, that we receive from, from many different ways really, from people deciding to leave us legacy donations, from people who are um, having cake sales, running challenges, doing events for us, from corporate donations. So 
we receive funding in, in many different ways, um, but it's all used for the same purpose. Uh, moving on to a couple of tools that you guys use to make things easier. So in the four years since, since you've been established here, um, I presume at that stage, in, in that time frame, things have changed a lot. Mm -hmm. um, so can you talk me through some of the, some of the ways you, you, manage, you manage patients and you manage the families who are involved? Obviously our numbers has, have increased over the four years. So when we started initially, it was very much paper-based, how we managed our referral process, uh, how we managed the allocation of referral nights. Um, we moved it from a paper-based system to a spreadsheet, but it's still very, a very cumbersome process that requires individual calculations based on what a family has used and what they will use between now and end of year. Children are different to adults. When adults um, enter a hospice, they generally are using that service for end-of-life care. Now, we provide end-of-life care here, but when children are referred to Laura Lynn, most children are not at end of life. Most children are with us for the duration of their their life. Um, and so come in and out to Laurel Inn. Um, and as a result of that, our records are are much bigger. Um, and it, it was a, it was there were a number of problems in trying to access the relevant information because the record was so big. Um, there was a problem with storage. Um, and there's all of the other problems that are associated with just trying to logistically manage that level of information on site as well. So we had to look at or, or start to address a, a look at other ways of how we were going to manage that into the future. So that's when we started to look at an electronic solution. Most children who have a life limiting condition who would receive care in the home will have a number of different healthcare professionals who provide that care. So there may be a community nurse, um, there may be part of their or members of their community palliative care team, there may be a Jack and Jill nurse, there may be a Laura Lynn nurse who all provide care and support to that family and they would all keep their own individual records um, and what it meant for our team that were going to the home they would keep a record in the home so that the other healthcare professionals could see what our what our team were doing but then they would come back to site here and duplicate basically write out that same record again in our documentation here so rather than the staff have to do that they now use tablets they use their PCs so they keep their record in the home, but they can take a copy of that when they're in the house and that transfers into the record here. So it's, it's, a, it's a scanned copy that we keep so that the staff aren't having to write out the record twice. How much of a um, time saver is that? It's a huge time saver. It certainly means that you know, the staff would have to come back on site here every evening after they did their home visits. And so in particular for the team that were working in Louth, Drogheda, that area, it's quite, it's quite a journey to have to come back to Leperstown at the end of every evening um, to have to record what they did during the day. So for a lot of those teams, we now have a satellite hub in Bracetown in Clonee. So it means that those teams can use that and they don't need to come back here. So they can put in as another visit. They can have a visit to another child rather than spend time on the road coming back to Laurel Inn. Uh, the electronic filing system you have here is called Vitro, I, I yes, believe. Yes. Um, that was basically just a, 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 that was this, the progression from mm -hmm. paper to spreadsheet to, yes. to software. Mm -hmm. What was the uh, learning curve like for that? I had been involved in, um, I suppose, using uh, software systems in the past. Um, and what I really liked about Vitro was they took our existing documentation and made it usable in a, in a software system. So what we didn't, we had about 90 forms, separate forms for each child that comes in. Um, one of the first things that Slauncher Vitro asked us to do was to, to reduce that down. So we leaned our processes. So we reduced it to 26 forms, um, which in itself reduced the amount of duplication and double record keeping that was being carried out in Laurel Inn. Um, the other piece that they did, rather than us having to devise a whole new IT system, they basically took what we were recording on paper and put it into an electronic system. So it meant that the transition or that, uh, I suppose, the way that staff engaged or staff getting used to the product, they were very, very familiar with what they were doing already. So it was a very easy change management project too. So every child that comes in here, we would assess them from head to toe um, and we'd point out if they're, you know, we'd take assessments if there were any rashes or anything like that on a child. Um, and the nursing staff would do that, the physiotherapist might do that, the occupational therapist might do it as well. So there was, there was just a lot of duplication in how they were recording the information, particularly at assessment. Now it means they can go onto the system and there is a, a little drawing of a body chart that you could just click on and point out where there are areas of concern. And it means that staff can see 
who has already assessed and they can either confirm uh, and support that assessment. How, how has the reduction in paperwork and labour there, has that saved money um, for the yes. facility? The documentation, we would archive our documentation, so it means that, and that comes at a cost. So in order to, you know, we'd have to pull records back, maybe in some cases from, from archive and uh, there's a cost to a facility or to an organisation to have to store our records for us. So certainly that's a huge saving for us. Um, and then there's just the cost of the paper as well. Um, whereas, and never mind the cost of time to staff and recording of data as well. Uh, lastly, the, uh, the new um, agreement you have with OneView for mm -hmm. um, is this entertainment system for children? It is, yes. Um, it's, uh, yeah, there are little screens that are at each bedside um, and there are four children and obviously there are parents and families that are in the room as well. Um, so you can watch TV, you can browse the internet, um, you, and we now have access to our vitro system on it as well. So the parents can see what the staff are recording in relation to their child's care too. So it's very much you know, uh, open and transparent and, and shared in relation to the care delivery. Um, the other piece that we're looking to put on it as well over time is educational videos for parents too. So there are certain children that um, there will be different ways of managing their care that will be unique to that child and so if you have different staff who are looking after that particular child um, it could be the child has a tracheostomy and they have a particular way that they like their dressing fixed or so on um, that we can do a little short video so that the staff member who's looking after that child can see well this is how that child likes to be cared for this is how they like their dressing or this is how they like to be positioned in bed this is this is what's most comfortable for them um, and then there's education pieces that we can put on it for parents as well to show them more appropriate positioning uh, more therapeutic play so they could be watching those when they're in the room too